right? So if you have read and understood considering this critical care scenario, kindly tell me how would you manage this patient now? Okay, ma. I will manage the patients using the uh, CRIPS uh, approach, using the ABCD of uh, treatment of the patients. Yes. How? So, so I, I will admit him. I will admit yes. him, ensure that there is no, that the airway is uh, patent. If he's talking, that means the airway is patent. I will ensure that he's also breathing. If there is any problem with his breathing, it may have to be uh, intubated or given oxygen to mechanically ventilate him. Then I will set, uh, take, check his uh, pulse BP and uh, set a uh, secure IV line, uh, intravenous line, using uh, uh, two uh, bulk okay. for him and yes. using two bulk cannulas and then give him a uh, fluid and then also ensure because of the confusion i will read his level of uh, consciousness and then do it uh, expose him and then do a uh, adequate examination for for him okay uh, considering this patient can you comment on the blood labs of this patient okay ma. the the there is a uh, hyponatremia Yes. hypokalemia then there's a metabolic uh, alkalosis ma yes why uh, why this patient has presented like this what the, might this, have happened yes yeah, this is going to be uh, as a result of the prof profuse uh, vomiting that he has so he has lost uh, sodium potassium then uh, chloride also is low Yes. In the in the vomitors, which are present in the vomitors that he has lost so much smart. Can you tell me the pathophysiology behind it? How if you can tell me all the steps? Okay, all this vomiting and uh profuse vomiting and all these has resulted into this. But can you help me to understand the pathophysiology behind it? Okay, ma the, the gastric uh, the gastric uh, juice contains yes. a potassium of about uh, five millimole. Then also has a, a hydrogen chloride HCl, and then also the um, sodium. So from patient vomiting and vomit from vomiting, patients lost uh, all this um, sodium, so lost mainly uh, potassium chloride, and then uh, hydrogen ion in his uh, vomitors. So with time, there is reduction in this uh, uh, electrolytes in the patient's body. Yes, because the but what is the mechanism? How does it take place? What is happening in the body that has resulted into this? Because something before has happened, which resulted into this. It's as a result of gastric outlet obstruction. So patients do yes. not... Uh, that's what... How as a result of gastric... Yes, how the edema takes place, how the ulcer is formed, why there is healing okay, ma. and fibrosis, how yes. this obstruction takes okay. place. Okay, for, for, for a patient that has a long-standing uh, peptic ulcer disease, there is a cicatrization yes. at the yes. gastric outlet. So this causes narrowing at the gastric outlet. So there is now accumulation of gastric contents in the stomach. And as a result of this, the stomachs become bigger. And then as a result of time, because of uh, resistance of the gastric outlet to a large gastric content to get into the small bowel where there is vomitors, provision uh, vomitors from the patient. Because of this constituent uh, electrolytes are present in the vomitors, then patient starts to lose this uh, tangible uh, tangible amount of these electrolytes, the potassium, hydrogen, chloride, and then the acid in the vomitors, which now leads to a uh, low amount of these electrolytes in the patient and also there's also dehydration as a result of the vomitors also Ma okay can you please tell me how would you classify the causes of uh, gastric obstruction gastric outlet obstruction okay ma the gastric outlet obstruction can be classified and um, yeah, there could be in uh, around infancy there could be infantile uh, hypertrophic and uh, pyloric stenosis then in adults will result from a uh, chronic uh, peptic ulcer disease with cicatrization. There could be also be gastric uh, tumor if it is located along, around the pylorus on the antrum, causing gastric outlet obstruction. It could also result from a, a pancreatic uh, tumor that is now causing uh, obstruction to the, to the gastric uh, 
to the gastric uh, outlet also can can result in a gastric outlet uh, obstruction. Ma. Okay. If you don't manage this patient, patient has hyponatremia, what are the complications that can result? As a result of the hyponatremia, patients could have uh, um, problems with his uh, level of consciousness. So patient could be confused, could become uh, del delirious as a result. And then if it's getting too low, patient could even have seizure from the result of the hyponatremia. Yes, there could be seizures, cerebral edema, brain disease, herniation. Okay, edema, what, yes, how would you comment on uh, potassium levels? How would, what measures would you do to correct that? Yes, ma'am. The potassium level is also low. The normal yes. potassium should be about 3.5 to 5 millimole. Yes. So, so in this patient, I want to hydrate the patient well enough. Once the patient is making adequate urine, then I will now start to collect the potassium and the aponitremia. And I want to calculate the, the deficit that the patient has and then the maintenance. So both will be added into his fluid so as to collect the, the hypokalemia. Okay, how how would you how would you correct hyperkalemia? Hypokalemia. Yes, to correct so the what hyperkalemia. What are the complications? Like, if you don't correct it, hypokalemia can result into what? Okay, ma. If the hypokalemia is not uh, uh, corrected, patients yes. patients who have um, cardiac uh, arrhythmia, so patients who have um, um, cardiac arrest in uh, Cis two, yes. Uh -huh. So that's why the, the hypokalemia must be corrected so as to prevent patients from having this and uh, little complication. Ma. In case of uh, okay, in case of metabolic alkalosis, bicarbonate level would be what would be the bicarbonate level? Would it be raised or uh, decreased? Yes, the, the bicarbonate level would be high, ma. Yes, how does it affect? The, the, uh, as a result of... Yes. Yes, please. Because bicarbon the bicarbonate level is high, usually with the correction of the... with adequate hydration of the patient, usually there is correction of the uh, IPAC and uh, of the high uh, bicarbonate that is in the patient. Yes, but uh, you didn't tell me reduction of pancreatic juice, secretion, etc. This, uh, okay, uh, hyponatremia leads to also paradoxical aciduria. Can you tell me how, what, what role does it play? Yes, for, for patient that has a uh, metabolic and uh, acalosis, what one will have expected in this, uh, in the, in the urea so should be, um, uh, and the urine source should be acalotic, but in patients with uh, no. GOO, GO, they have yes. paradoxical aciduria. The I've... body tries, yes, the oh. body tries to, to absorb uh, the the potassium, sodium. yes, in the so in the, of which the sorry the sodium. There is activation of the relin aldosterone uh, uh, yes. system in the body, so as to conserve water, conserve yes. water, conserve uh, sodium in the patient, and then so as, and then the potassium also that the patient is losing the formators. So more acid is lost into the urine of the patient. So this leads to the yes, uh, aciduria. Sure. That, this is what I wanted to understand because this hypokalemia and the urine became acidic due to presence of hydrogen. That's how hydrogen is coming. Yeah. All right, yes, one last question, Bell is gone. Can you tell me when this patient would be fit for surgery? Because you said it's a gastric outlet obstruction and it's not a child, it's an adult patient. My bed is down. Okay, it's an adult patient. One last question, please. Yes, the patient will be fit for surgery after patient has been well hydrated, the electrolyte derangement has been uh, corrected and then there is also a no diagnosis uh, cost responsible for the GOO in the patient before patient will be fit for the surgery. Good. Yes, thank you. The